in our previous session we have covered heat recovery system as well as the cogeneration system so now in today's session i would like to start new topic called steam system so let's begin our session with this topic and understand what do you mean by steam system before going toward the brief explanation of the steam system just try to think that why we need to learn the steam system so to answer this question let's consider we have a thermal power plant as an example and in thermal power plant we need to design the piping network which connect the boiler and the turbine so how to design that piping network let's tell me so you can say in order to connect turbine with boiler we need to arrange piping network in a such a way that the heat loss is minimized i mean to say steam is not rejecting heat toward the outside air okay so for that we need to provide the insulation on the pipe that is our first thing then second thing secondary thing you can say we need to locate piping network in a such a way that the distance between the boiler and the turbine is getting minimized instead of following very complex path we need to arrange piping network in such a way that its path should be easily traceable as well as it is free from the hot atmosphere or you can say cold atmosphere so that the heat gain and heat loss is getting minimized okay so such kind of the thing we need to observe and we need to decide okay so in this topic particularly we are going to discuss some of the fundamentals by which we are able to locate the piping network and we are able to improve the efficiency of the steam piping network okay <clears throat> so now let me begin with the one another topic called property of the steam because prior to designing or you can say locating the pipe it's quite essential for us to understand the property of the steam so recall thermodynamic in thermodynamic we have studied the ts diagram which you can visualize on the screen here the main function of ts diagram is to divide the two phase system in two different zone in liquid and vapor zone ultimately it's the thumb rule to plot ts diagram whenever we are dealing with the two phase system and in this ts diagram you can see we have critical curve and the critical curve divide or you can say separate liquid and vapor zone if you observe the extreme left part of the critical curve then on left hand side we have a liquid region and on the right hand side we have a superheated region and inside the critical curve we have a liquid plus vapor or you can say wet region if you observe the diagram then you can see the distance between b to c okay this zone particularly is known as the zone in which we required to supply or absorb the latent heat in order to change the phase of the substance for example if you want to convert water to steam then we need to supply heat okay and if you want to condense superheated steam to the water then we need to reject heat so the zone between b to c is known as you can say latent zone which require heat exchange in order to have a phase change clear so it is all about the ts diagram and some of the basic fundamental of the steam that you might study in engineering thermodynamic clear now next one is a assessment of steam distribution losses so why we need to assess the steam distribution losses why we need to assess the steam distribution losses because ultimately by assessing the losses we are able to decide particular pressure range of the boiler 
ओके हाउ जस्ट लेट मी गिव यू वन एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स से इन बॉयलर वी आर जनरेटिंग सुपर एटेड स्टीम एंड अवर टर्बाइन यूनिट इज फार अवे फ्रॉम द बॉयलर तो वॉट इज गोइंग टू बी हैपन एज द स्टीम पास फ्रॉम द पाइपिंग नेटवर्क वॉट इज गोइंग टू बी हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ द वेरी हाई टेम्परेचर ऑफ द स्टीम ड्यूरिंग द ट्रेवलिंग फ्रॉम द बॉयलर टू द टर्बाइन द स्टीम विल रिजेक्ट इट हिट टू द सराउंडिंग एयर इवन दो वी हैव एक्सट्रीम high insulation some sort of heat is getting rejected from the steam and because of the rejection of steam there might be probability of the condensation of the steam some portion of the steam is getting condensed and as this steam is getting condensed but obviously there is a reduction in the pressure and this reduction in the pressure can affect the turbine performance and its efficiency so that to avoid this kind of the thing or you can say to improve the designing of the piping network by creating the minimum pressure drop we need to understand or you can say we need to assess the stream distribution system in thermal power station uh, we have lots of piping network through which the steam is passing so for the each piping network we are able to judge the pressure drop as well as the temperature drop as well as we are able to assess the heat transfer rate clear so now as i told you here our main objective is to fix the maximum and the minimum working pressure of the boiler we can't go beyond the maximum pressure as well as the minimum pressure so that by doing so we are able to so that we are able to decide the operating pressure range of the steam whenever it is passing through the pipeline okay and as well as we are able to calculate the different friction loss so that we are able to avoid the condensation and we are able to improve the energy efficiency of the turbine as well as complete power plant clear now next one is a feature of the steam piping so as i told you that uh, we need to locate pipe in a such a way that the distance between the boiler and the turbine unit is getting minimized because if the distance is very large then uh, there is more chances of the condensation of the steam okay which again uh, affect our performance so that uh, we need to provide the path in such a way that the distance between the boiler and the turbine is getting minimized and again in between the piping network we need to arrange some sort of this steam trap valve okay steam trap valve so that we are able to dump the condensate that's formed because of the heat transfer phenomenon inside the pipe So now next one is a steam trapping. What do you mean by steam trapping? So you can say the steam trapping is nothing but the way by which we are able to dump, or you can say we are able to extract the condensate that form while the steam is traveling from the one location to the another location. Listen, the condensation is not in our hand. and we are not able to avoid complete condensation there is always uh, let's say it's a minimum 1 percentage of the condensation is there so to further avoid the more condensation it's our responsibility to remove the con whatever condensate that is already created okay because the more amount of the condensation at the end create the complete steam heat rejection to the air as well as inside condensate which is prevailing inside the pipe i mean to say so it's our duty to reject or you can say remove or extract the condensate that is forming while the steam is traveling so the process of the removal of the condensate from the pipe is known as steam trapping and main function of steam 
trappings are to discharge the condensate as soon as it forms because more accumulation of the condensate causes the more amount of the steam to be condensed which again affect the performance then after not to allow steam to escape then third one is to be capable of discharging air and the other condensate gases that is formed because of the dissolved gases inside the steam so the main three functions are written here so that you can read okay now next one is a way by which we are able to trap this steam so basically we have two technique first one is a thermostatic type of steam first one is a thermostatic type of steam trapping device and second one is a mechanical device in mechanical device we have lots of category like inverted bucket then after biometallic strip then after thermodynamic type of mechanical device then after float and thermostatic device okay so uh, as far as the syllabus of gtu is concerned we have a name of this device in our syllabus only but still i want to brief you a one device called inverted bucket type of this steam trapping so that you will get clear idea so here in this diagram you can see we have a one inverted bucket which is mounted in steam pipe so as the steam is getting passed through the pipe what is going to be happen the point where the inverted bucket is fixed okay at this point steam is travel on top for start here on the left hand side diagram i am to say on second diagram here in this diagram you can see as the steam is getting passed what is going to be happen it will create the force so that the lever that is shown by the circle on diagram you can see is lifted and because of the pressure difference some of the steam is getting condensed and leave from the top part side while the remaining steam is again getting back inside the pipe so it is can say one of the simplest arrangement that one can have but we can have lots of uh, possible arrangement with us that i have discussed that we have thermostatic as well as uh, we have a thermodynamic type by by metallic strip type okay but nowadays the people are using the thermostatic type of thing because of its automatic operation and it is far better compared to the inverted bucket for the variable load condition okay so it is all about the steam trapping uh, clear so steam steam trapping is nothing but the process by which we are able to extract the condensate of the steam through the pipe now next one is the performance assessment of the steam system so why we need to assess the performance of the steam system so you can say in order to identify the how and where the losses are taken place and to improve the efficiency of the complete system and to say particularly piping network it's quite essential to assess the performance of the steam system and for that we need to continuously observe the steam trapping as well as the uh, combustion process now for the assessment of the steam system we have a lot of uh, devices with us first one is you can say visual testing in visual testing what is going to be happen we have a, a one cylinder a transparent cylinder that we need to connect in between the pipe so that whenever the steam is getting passed through the pipe we are able to observe the quality of the steam i mean to say whether it is in wet state or superheated state okay and by which we are able to conclude that uh, uh, there is no condensation forming inside the pipe so it is uh, one of the cheapest option but uh, this thing is only suitable for the extreme low load condition or for the plant in which the requirement of the steam is quite less then second one is the sound testing in sound testing ultimately the ultrasonic testing techniques are used ultrasonic waves are traveled through the pipe i mean to say we have one kind of the thing so with the ultrasonic waves are traveling extract to the pipe and again reverted back so then by using the sound we are able to identify whether there is a, a proper amount of the steam is there or condensate is there okay and based on this we are able to decide 
that whether that's a too much condensed or less and based on that we are able to fix the particular valves for this steam trapping then third one is the temperature testing it's quite uh, simple we have a gun okay through gun uh, we need to measure the temperature of the steam and but of course the temperature is the great indicator of the quality of the steam whether it is very yeah super heated yeah it is in pure liquid state i mean this is just water okay so uh, we have this type of technique with us by which we are able to assess the performance of the steam system then uh, you can say energy saving opportunity of the steam turbine so first one is to monitor the steam trap it's our duty to regularly observe the steam trap and to make sure that the uh, zero amount of the condensate will remain inside the pipe the second one is the continuous steam blow and no flow indicate okay whenever the steam trap fail to operate the reasons are not readily available or is it identifiable so at that time we need to blow certain amount of the steam and we need to make sure that we must be able to run our system in the stipulated period of the time without avoiding too much of the energy losses the third one is to avoid the steam leakage fourth one provide dry steam for the process because the wet steam can create the corrosion okay the so fifth one is uh, utilizing the steam at lower acceptable pressure for the any process because higher pressure means we need to make robust device or you can say robust piping network or you can say different equipment like boiler condenser and etc so the steam pressure should be moderate then next one is a proper utilization of directly injected steam make sure that the steam is only supplied where it's required i mean to say leakage should be minimum so that the energy is getting saved then after minimize heat transfer barrier okay certain time what is going to be happen the point where the steam is required and the point from which the steam is coming and between these two thing we have a certain amount of the gases or air and ultimately these gases and air will reduce the effective heat transfer so make sure that there must be minimum heat barrier then after provide proper air venting for so that whatever the dissolved gases that uh, dissolve inside the steam is getting vented out at suitable location then after condensate recovery so for the condensate recovery you can say whatever the amount of the heat that is uh, rejected by the steam in form of the condensate this heat we are able to utilize again where you can say uh, we can directly feed this water to the feed water heater so that uh, we are able to avoid the unnecessary expanses behind the fuel and we are able to sustain our environment by reducing the usage of the fuel so it is all about the steam system thank you and stay tuned for the next session